Hey guys, welcome back. In this video we're going to remove the trunnion bearing from the steering axle. So the trunnion bearing is this bearing down here, and there's one at the top. And uh, the one top is the easiest one to remove, but we're going to remove the one here at the bottom. So obviously first job was to remove the wheel, so we have all the wheel nuts off. Next, we're going to come down here and we're going to remove the trunnion bearing here at the bottom. And after a whole lot of swearing, we have it out. So this probably took about two or three hours to remove. So this is the trunnion bearing that we removed. So you can see that it's fairly broken up. That's why we were replacing it. So how do we get it out? Well, I didn't really know how to get it out. So the method that I used was heat everything with the gas. So everything was nice and warm. You're not gonna get anything red because everything here is such a heat sink. It's just gonna absorb the heat. But that was kind of the plan. So we heated everything, just let it cool off naturally. Then we heated it a second time and once the heat got into everything up here, we got an airline and underneath it, just here, it just kept blowing cold air onto it with the idea of this would hopefully shrink when everything else has expanded. And then we just got chisels in and we drove them in here at the front. So there is a lip just here. You can see where it's a bit damaged, but um, it's the only place you can actually get a chisel in. So there's one of there at the back, back and the one at the front. So we managed to get chisel in there and you can see the hairline crack then developing and we just keep hitting it from left and right and eventually we did actually get it separated. So the idea was we use quite a sharp chisel, get it in here and once it's starting to move then we got rid of the small sledgehammer and went to the really big sledgehammer, this one here. And uh, we had, I got my dad to hold the chisel, we had two or three different chisels at, at different stages but use a vice grip because you're going to be hitting it so you don't want to take out his fingers so he held it with a vice grip holding, holding on the chisel holding it in here and then we drove it out so now in better light we're going to have another look at it so you can see there is a hairline crack just there and there's another one just there it has been there quite a long time so it has basically just broken up you can see the rust that was all there all along here there was rust and that's where it's good so you can see that there is a little gap there at the bottom or in the middle to say and then there's um, actually metal here at this side and this side which actually will touch this bit here just kind of floats there and it's, it's empty but uh, unfortunately the rust has built up and basically just welded itself closed or joined together so it was very difficult to remove it so the priest comes in here comes out the top and refill, repacks this bearing up here. So we're going to have another look now and turn the steering wheel out this way. Okay, so we can see there's a nice little gap just there. And there's some of the old bearing just after pulling out of it there now. So um, there's the... The rest of the housing is still stuck up there. You can see some more bearing as, as well up there. So we're going to remove the whole lot now. And then install the new bearing. All right, we have the trunnion bearing into the vise. There's our nice little sledgehammer and a chisel. So we're going to try and drive it off now. There's already a hairline crack in it there now. Right, that's one side now done. Just have to hit the other side. So thankfully there was a hairline crack in both sides of it. That's also why the bearing had failed. So we're going to try and work the other side off now and uh, see how we get on. Okay, after a bit of whacking, that came off. That's the plate underneath it. So it's fairly well damaged. And um, I think I'm just gonna put this in parts wash and get a wash and just see if it's savable. Hopefully it is because I don't have a replacement one. I know I can still buy one, but um, yeah, it's just extra cost. So let's uh, get a wash, see how bad it is. Okay, so here we are underneath the machine. So you can see the, that's the hub there, axles, everything. Okay, um, that's the bearing just up there, you can see it. And uh, 
I have no idea how I'm going to extract this. So to get the old race out, basically, or the old housing of the bearing out, uh, I hit off the inside bearing, so now it's the outside bearing has to be removed, and I have zero idea how I'm going to remove this. Um, I wonder if I got some gas, heated it, and maybe get a bear, uh, chisel in, and maybe drive it out, but it actually looks like it's nearly like rusted together so not really sure and that's not a crack in it it's actually like i don't know that coming up there we go that's so you can see like even with the light on it better it looks like it's literally mashed together it's not going to separate too easily so if you know how to do it easily leave a comment in the comment below right let's try something Okay, so just after heating the bearing there with the gas, and I'm uh, just going to cool it down now with a bit of WD-40 with the intention of, if I cool the bearing, hopefully it'll contract where everything else will stay expanding. <laughs> That's a lot of smoke. Hopefully I can cool the bearing enough that it'll want to uh, break the bond and hopefully it'll come out quite easily. Okay, I'll come back to you when I have it hopefully out. Okay, I got the bearing out, so I had to use the die grinder and just die grind into the side of it, try to make it collapse a little bit and then just heat it with the gas as well. So I got one of the little arms off the puller because I couldn't get the puller in. But I just used this as a prodder because I couldn't find my own prodder and basically just went in this way and just walked it all the way around and kept pulling on it and eventually it came out so uh, yeah it's finally out right let's get the new one in okay so i have the new outside shell and uh, yeah it's still very cold so i had it in the freezer overnight so it's now ready to go into the loader and the idea is if i have this freezing cold and I just give the outside of the loader the, the hub a bit of a heat and then press them in, they should all go in. Okay, so to get the outside shell bearing in, I use a piece of stainless steel and the bottle jack and pushed in so it was like the press. And once the bottle jack wouldn't push in anymore because the loader arms were starting to lift up off the ground, got rid of the jack and then just sent it home by just tapping on the outside of this with a sledgehammer. So the outside, so I now have the outside shell tapped all the way home. Okay, so I did get a replacement kingpin or trunnion. That's the part numbers there if you want them. And uh, looking at the two of them, they look pretty much identical. The only real difference I can see is this base here is slightly thicker than this one. And this one has a lot of worn and damage to it, so I can't really take too many measurements. I have put a new bearing onto it because I did need the loader straight away while I was waiting for this to come in. It was, I think, 20 or 30 euros for the bearing. Can't remember what the bearing is, but um, that's the bearing there. And this is the seal kit. So the seal, I think, goes on first. I'm not really sure which way around it goes, but obviously then the bearing goes in afterwards. So there, this, this bearing and this bearing are identical, so I don't have to replace the outside shell. I can just put it back in because that's a brand new bearing. It's like two or three days old, so I'm just going to use the inside of this one, not going to use the outside. And I'm going to have this as a spare or emergency bearing in case, these, in case the one on the opposite side failed and I need to reorder all the stuff. The only real difference that I can actually see is this one has a little line or a little groove in. And this one here is flat the whole way up. So like there's no groove. So obviously then you have all of this touching. Where on this one here it would be only the top and the bottom and the middle piece isn't touching. So like it's not held in as tightly. I don't know whether this is a top or a bottom. I'm suspecting it's probably a top or else uh, a next generation kind of design where this be the old one. However, I have checked the heights and they're exactly the same. And where the bearing goes in, so it touches up here. This one is very worn, so it's hard to take a measurement correctly and it's covered in grease now. But I think they're the exact same. 
so fingers crossed they all should fit it has the lips on the outside that you hit with the chisel this has the same so i don't know i think they look identical so i'm going to stall it anyway and uh, see how we get on and now i have it all pressed together with copper grease on it to make it easier to take out sometime in the future all right guys don't forget to put your grease into the nipple up there and i should plan to do this whole job again in a few weeks time so grease is done so i'm very happy with that we're going to give the loader a test bin now and check that it's all working Guys, thanks very much for watching. That's now the Trunnion all fixed, all rebuilt, and I'm very happy with it. It's lovely and smooth again, so that's brilliant. So, as always, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, subscribe over there, and as always, thanks for watching. See you later.